Let us now look at how to work with selection using a flowchart. In our previous flowcharts, all our statements we would say were sequential. So if we look at the previous example that we did, all of these statements, there's four statements here. These are all sequential. Sequential means one after the other. So everything that we've done so far was sequential. They contained one statement after the other. Now, when we look at selection, in selection, we are going to be making a decision. And that decision is going to have an outcome. It's going to have a particular outcome. And based on the outcome, we could follow different pathways. Let me give you an example. So let's assume we are executing this particular pathway. We're going to get to this point. And when we get to this point, we could have two different pathways to take. So this is where a decision is going to be made. A decision is going to be made. And based on the decision, you will decide, I will go this way or I will go that way. I can't go in both directions. I can only go in one of them. But everything will hinge on the outcome of this particular decision. So when we are doing, when we are performing selection, we just said that there's decisions that are made. These decisions contain conditions. And the conditions evaluate to true and false. So as I indicated, you're going to be moving in this direction. You're then going to come up with a decision that has to be made here, which will be a condition. So there'll be a condition here. And based on whether that condition is true, I will go that way. And if that is false, I will then go in that direction. So that decision that we're going to be making, right? In fact, you'll see just now, we're going to be drawing it as a diamond shape. That decision that we're going to be making is going to evaluate to either true or false. And if it's true, that's the direction we take. And if it's false, we move in a different direction. So let's understand conditions a little better. Since our decisions, they're going to contain conditions. Let's understand how the conditions work. So this could be a typical condition. Num is greater than 10. So that is a condition. Remember, conditions, they are either true or they false. So depending on the value of num, this will make the condition true or false. So if num has a value bigger than 10, the condition is true. If num has a value smaller than 10, then the condition is false. In the second one, we have a condition ans equals 50. That's another condition, which will be true or false. Cost greater than 800, another condition. Salary less than or equal to 5,000. That again is another condition. And each of these are examples of conditions that will evaluate to either true or false. They cannot be both true and false. They will either be true or they will be false. Because once you know the condition is true, we will branch in one direction. Once you know the condition is false, you will then branch in another direction. You cannot be going in both directions at the same time. So depending on the condition, you will move in one direction. So when num is five, we, let's, look at, let's look at this particular condition. If num is five, so is five, we've got the condition num greater than 10. So is five greater than 10? 
No, that's false. So if num is five, then the condition evaluates to false. So what happens when num is 15? When num is 15, is 15 greater than 10? Yes, so the condition is true. And then what happens when num is 10? If num is 10, then is 10 greater than 10? 10 is not greater than 10, 10 is equal to 10. Therefore, the condition is false. So depending on different values that we take on num, they impact the condition differently. And when num was five, it made the condition false. When num was 15, the condition was true. When num was 10, the condition was false. Let's now apply this. Well, before we apply it, let's just look at all the different types of operators that can be used in a condition. So equal to means equality. I'm looking for an exact value, num equal to 10. I'm looking for an exact value, num must be equal to 10 for the condition to be true. Here, that's greater than, this is less than, this is greater than or equal to. And this is less than or equal to. So if I had to say num greater than or equal to 10, and now if my number was 10, is 10 greater than or equal to 10? Yes, it's equal to 10. Therefore, the condition is true. But if you have num, strictly greater than 10. And if the number is 10, then in that instance, the condition now is false because 10 is not greater than 10, making the condition false. 